Hello, my name is David Cook and I'm the executive chef at Erewhon Pines Resort in Algonquin Park, Ontario. And I'm also the chef for today's cooking demonstration, which will involve actually no cooking at all. Today we're going to do a foraged meal, because here in Ontario, it's May. And the lockdown has lifted enough for phase one, and we are now allowed to visit outside places, parks and garden centres. So I chose outside places, and here I am at Acorn Creek and I'm going to forage a salad for us. Uh, one of our most popular items at Arrowham Pines on the buffet <laughs> uh, is our house salad, and it's popular because it's an, it is an explosion of flavors with at least 10, 12 different kinds of lettuces, several different herbs, 20 or 30 different kinds of wild flowers and foraged materials, and lots of crunchy vegetables. And one of our most popular recipes on our website is our house salad dressing. So today I've come to Acorn Creek to forage uh, spring salad materials. It's May in Ontario and there's lots of things sprouting and uh, waiting to be, uh, sticking their pre-heads up and waiting to be eaten. And uh, I'm here to pick them. So let's go pick a salad. And the first thing I've got here is some lovely watercress. Straight from the stream. First one of the spring. Here we have a little wild lovage and just a little bit of this because it is quite sharp. Andy Tarodes, our farmer at Acorn Creek, has very generously given me the run of his farm and allowed me into his greenhouse where I'm going to pick a few things to supplement our salad, namely some wild arugula, some cauliflower leaf, couple of nice, delicate lettuce leaves. And some kale. And a few violets. out on the farm now, the farm proper, and as you can see, everything, it's planting season, everything is just starting to sprout, including all of this wild garlic. And it's all about looking closely. First of this spring's violas, and you're out and about on the farm grounds now, growing in and amongst all these nettles. Cute! Sweet little violets. Oh, and the first of the dandelions. And what spring salad would be complete without dandelions? When they're at their most tenderest and their sweetest when they first come up. Okay, and look what I found. Here's the first of this year's chives, and oh, fresh, nice lemony sorrel. All fresh, nice, bitter, and some chives, and I might put some chives into the salad dressing as well. Take those two buds. Too soon to flower, it's cold. And here, hiding in with the rhubarb, is some fresh cress. Have that nice peppery. And some marigold. That's simple and delicious. Here's a little bit of tarragon fresh up. Nice and light. That can go into the dressing too. And I'll have those. I'm gonna wait another hour or two for the sun to warm them up. Here we have trout lily, which is the second flower in the spring after the crocus, and edible. Leaves are edible too, just not too many. And if you look carefully, here's our first shoots of mint. And I will definitely have some of them. Of course, it's not just above the ground, there's good things. 
but in the ground as well. Jerusalem artichokes, beautiful. And I'm going to need some garlic to make the dressing, so I think I'll just take a little bulb out here. Just going to finish off with a little marjoram and a few more chives. And if you can hear the water, you might know that I have changed my location. And I'm at Little Joe Lake. I'm going to go wash my hands and make some salad for lunch. So here I am at, El at Erwan Pines in beautiful Algonquin Park. And as the saying goes, it is a beautiful day in Algonquin Park. And this is our brand new demonstration kitchen looking overlooking Little Joe Lake. I had such great plans for this kitchen and uh, on how I was going to entertain you all this summer and today I'm actually going to start using this kitchen. So I've dragged a uniform kicking and screaming out of the closet, I've put it on and I'm ready to play chef for an hour or two. Uh, and so uh, today I'm going to be doing wild spring for salad with our house dressing. And you know, I can't really remember all the things we forged, so I think that's the first thing. I'm going to lay them all out and identify them for us. So just to refresh our memories over what we picked, we picked some wild watercress from the stream, and then I picked some lovage, and then we went into the greenhouse at Acorn Creek, and I picked various lettuces. I have spinach, arugula, beet green, uh, red leaf sorrel, uh, I have cabbage leaf, broccoli leaf, uh, cauliflower leaf, kale, lava rosso, oak leaf lettuce. I went outside and got some dandelion leaf. Unfortunately, the dandelion flowers didn't make the trip up here. Uh, I picked a few Jerusalem artichokes that I'm going to peel shortly. We have some chives and some wild garlic here, some wild sorrel. There's a little bit of wild marjoram from the lakeside, some tarragon, some basil leaf, some coriander, some dill. There's the first of the mint shoots. This is trout lily leaf, and I found in the rhubarb patch a little bit of the uh, mustard crust here, nice and spicy. Uh, and next to that is all the wild violas, nice and sweet. And then we have trout lily flower, both closed that I picked in the morning and open that I picked in the afternoon. Uh, pansies, snapdragons, marigolds here, dianthus, uh, dahlias, and petunias. So just even before I have added any crunch, we have 40 individual flavor profiles in our salad. And now I'm going to uh, clean and wash these very well because they are wild and uh, then mix them together for our salad. Here are all the herbs and lettuces that have been washed. This is the third time they have been washed in the sink. And now I'm just going to spin them dry. Okay, and here is all the lettuces and herbs that have been mixed. And just listen to that fresh crunch. And they're going to go into our salad bowl, and that is the base for our salad, right there. And the reason I did not put the flowers in with all of these beautiful edible greens is because the flowers are much more delicate and will bruise very easily, so I'm going to wash them next. Okay, so here are all our washed flowers, and just to process them, the violas, they can go into the mix just like they are. The violets, the stem have to come off. The trout lily, the stem have to come off. The pansies, the stem, any green comes off. The snapdragon, the green comes off. The marigolds, we just pull all the petals out. Same with the dianthus. The, and the dahlia and the petunia, you just tear it up. So I'm going to do all that now and then wash them. And here are our washed flower petals, spun dried, nice and light. It smells like a botanical garden. Some of these are spicy, some of them are sweet, and that is going on top of our lettuce here and herbs. So there's our lettuce and herbs, and there's our flower leaves. We call this our soft garnish. So before I can put my salad together, I think I need some hard garnish, some things to add some crunch. And that's what I will do next, mixture to the salad. And I have used whatever really I could find in the cupboard. So today we have some red pepper, some red onion, nice and mild, 
some crunchy carrot, and in the summertime we always like to use the farmer's carrots. I like the flavor fresh out of the ground. Some celery, some spring onion, and some of those beautiful uh, Jerusalem artichokes, which I've just peeled, and they have a nice cabbage flavor, very similar to uh, kohlrabi. Uh, and they are the first tuber of the springtime, and the tomatoes. So I'm going to cut these up and get them ready for our salad. When you're cutting up the things for the crunch, don't cut them too small. They want to have texture. You want to be able to taste the crunch. So there is our crunch. And that I'm just going to mix into the salad. So. We have our lettuce, our flowers, our crunch. The only thing we need now is some salad dressing. Let's make that now. Okay, our salad dressing is posted on our website, www.arrowandpines.ca. But the ingredients for roughly four cups, which is what I'm making today, is a three quarters of a cup of Vidalia onion, nice and sweet. 3 tablespoons of capers, 1 tablespoon of Dijon mustard, 1 tablespoon of roasted garlic, and I forgot to bring the garlic so I plucked this today from the garden and roasted it, 3 quarters of a cup of tightly packed herbs, and this is the beauty of our salad dressing because the herbs change the nature of the salad dressing every time you add them, so you can mix up the herbs. Today I have some parsley, basil, dill and coriander, but we can also add chives, garlic, green garlic, uh, oregano, a little bit of marjoram. In the summertime we add tarragon and stevia and anything else, so every time we make the dressing it changes slightly. Then I have one cup of olive oil and one cup of canola oil. The olive oil is to give the dressing body and flavor and the canola oil is to make it light. Three quarters of a cup of rice wine vinegar and of course my little salt bunny here. So I'm going to take all of this and I'm going to combine it right now and mix it with a blender. Okay, so everybody into the boat. And that's it. That's our house dressing. Oh, one more thing. Mustard works with the olive and the canola oil to emulsify, makes the whole thing mix and blend with no stabilizing agent. It's nice and green, smells lovely. Tastes like summer. Okay, to put our salad together, a little bit of our beautiful mixed forage greens. And some nice crunch. A little bit of our dressing. Just enough to coat. So there are about 47 or 48 different elements of flavor in this salad. Each one is an explosion in the mouth. If you were serving it singularly, it would look like this. Park.